Hey folks, in this video we're going to be creating some bullet chart sparkline measures right inside Power BI. So what is a bullet chart sparkline measure? That's a handful, isn't it? Well, uh, it's a sparkline, which means, which means it's a little teeny tiny chart that fits inside of a table. And uh, we're going to be leveraging the new ability to set uh, measures as images inside of Power BI that's going to let us draw these little itty bitty charts inside of our tables. It's going to be really, really cool. So what does it look like? Well, it looks like this, right? So this right here uh, is a bullet chart. This is sort of the sparkline version of it, so it's a little teeny tiny. These were invented by a guy named Stephen Few, whose books I couldn't recommend uh, more. Uh, what these are uh, designed to do is they're designed to convey the concept of actual to goal in a very space-efficient manner, right? So if you see, uh, for each one of these rows right here, each one of these things is a uh, location or a store, right? And we've got the store city, it's state, it's country. Uh, we've got the total sales and the total goal. And that's what we're visualizing on the chart here, right? So we've got this gray background strip. And then uh, we've got this dark horizontal bar, which corresponds to the, the actual value. And then this vertical bar, which corresponds to the goal. So we, as we scroll up and down on this thing, we could see pretty darn easily uh, which locations are meeting or exceeding their goal, right? And how, uh, yeah, in terms of actuals, how these things are doing compared to each other. So like right now I'm searching by goal. If I search by location, or not search, but sort, uh, I can very quickly get sort of a sense of all of the different um, actuals and how they're doing compared to their goals, right? It's very space efficient. The other really nice thing about this is it's dynamic, right? So creating the pictures was pretty easy. You could do that six months ago in Power BI, but having the ability to say, hey, I'm gonna click here and click here and click here and have these things be redrawn uh, with whatever context that I've got sliced down to, that's really uh, powerful and that's something we've only gotten uh, with the latest release of Power BI, right? And so way that, the way that this is working is each one of these uh, little charts is actually, uh, it's a text string that I generated and this text string corresponds to something called SVG, which is Scalable Vector Graphics. And that's just a way of, um, well, basically uh, drawing an image. Uh, on the web, right? So it's scalable vector in the sense that it's not a bunch of pixels, it's a bunch of shapes. So like this image here, uh, you know, I'll go into this in a second. It's basically uh, a canvas, it's 100 by 100 pixels um, by default, and it's got three little rectangles on it that correspond to the background strip, to the actual value, and the horizontal value. And because we can uh, now code measures as a web URL, or I should say image URL, Power BI will, will see this text and say, oh, I know how to parse that. I know how to turn that into an image, and it'll draw it for us, just like this, okay? So uh, where we're going to start, so I'm going to pop this guy over right here and open up my base text. Now, uh, I did this a bit more in depth in my last video, so if you want to see a slower walkthrough, that might be a good place to start. I'm going to speed through this a little bit more this time. Uh, what we've got here is we've got this based SVG text, and if I was going to be doing this in a regular old website, it would look something like this, right? Uh, I've added this little bit right uh, here, I should say right there. Power BI is going to need that. This is going to tell Power BI that the text string we're working with is an image. It's an XML. It's encoded in XML uh, as well as UTF-8. And then here uh, for SVG, this whole bit right here, this defines what's called the uh, canvas of the image, which is to say the entire background, not the strip, but the entire darn thing. And so one of the things that I've found with these uh, SVG measures is they always have a one-to-one -one or square aspect ratio. So it's best to set the width and the height to the same thing currently. Uh, that way uh, you could sort of um, design accordingly. And by having a width and height of 100, that makes the math a little bit easier to do, right? Now you're gonna be able to scale this thing in Power BI to make it bigger or smaller than 100 by 100, but it'll always be like 50 by 50 or 120 by 120. It'll keep that square aspect ratio just like we like. Okay, uh, so as I said a second ago, this particular image has three objects in it. It's got this rectangle right here. Rect stands for rectangle. Um, it has the, uh, the the place the rectangle starts, the, its upper left corner. You, you start at the upper left corner of the image. You go right zero and you go down 25, which is about a quarter of the way down the image, which is why I set it to uh, 100. Makes the math really easy, right? This Rx and Ry, these are just me rounding the rectangles of my shapes a little bit to take the corners off a little bit. Uh, if you look here, this one has a width of 100. That's because this first rectangle is the background strip that goes from there to there. And since I've defined my image as having a width of 100, because this goes, this has also has a width of 100, it goes all the way across. And the height of 50 means that it's sort of the inner half of the image is what the strip is, right? Uh, the second rectangle, this is my actual amount, right? And you can see right there it says actual. Um, it starts at 0, 2, and its width, uh, how far across the image it goes, is defined by our actual value. We're going to have to sub this out with a number, and we're going to use DAX to do that, right? 
Likewise, if we look at this rectangle right here, this is the goal. And the goal doesn't start over here all the way on the left. It sort of starts wherever, well, the goal is, right? And so you see here, the x-axis is hashtag goal. We're going to sub out the goal number there. And the um, by contrast, the width this time is always the same. It doesn't change based on the goal. The thing that changes is, you know, where it actually is. Okay, so uh, to get started with this thing, I'm going to go ahead and select the whole thing. We're going to encounter um, a problem pretty quickly. When you're working with text in a DAX measure, whenever it sees these uh, quotation marks, it assumes that's the end of the text string, and that's not what we want. We want quotation marks, these quotation marks, to actually be a part of the text string. And so what we need to do is swap out these uh, single uh, double quotation marks with, two pa with a pair of uh, double quotation marks. So if I select the whole thing, head up to Image, and go to replace. I'm going to replace, oh, this is the opposite. I'm going to replace a uh, single quote double quotation marks with double double quotation marks. So quattro quotation marks, right? One and then two. I'm going to replace all. Okay. Go back. Okay. This is going to work really nicely in Power BI. I'm also going to set uh, an open quotation or an open quotation mark there and an open quotation mark here. And this is the, the base text that's going to, we're going to use to create our image. So let's head back to Power BI. I'm going to twirl open fields here. I'm going to twirl open visualization because I can. Uh, this is my demo one. I'm going to head over here to start. This is where I want to build the thing, right? I'm going to head over here to measures, right click on this guy, do new measure. And I'm going to call this uh, my favorite bullet chart, better than all the other ones. Okay. So the first bit I'm going to define, I'm going to do var for variable. I'm going to call this v base text. Right? This is the text that I'm going to use to build everything else. And that's just the thing we got a second ago, control V. Okay, I'm gonna go backspace here, backspace a little bit here, and backspace there, and hit delete there, just so I can compress these guys a little bit. It's already hard enough to read, okay? So now what I'm gonna do is uh, take this variable, go create numbers for hashtag goal and hashtag actual, and then I'll swap those numbers uh, into this text, right? And then I'll send that back to Dax, and Dax will be able to draw our picture for us, okay? So uh, now that we've got our base text all accounted for, we're gonna go get a uh, table of all the objects that we need, right? And this is gonna be um, all of our stores, right? But what we wanna do is we wanna make sure that uh, when we get this list of uh, stores that we're gonna um, add to our table, we're gonna add both the uh, city and the uh, province and the um, country uh, in our list. And what that's gonna let us do is that way, what we need to do is we need to get the, the far end of our chart, which is to say how far do all of the charts go to the right? And to do that, we're going to get a need to get a list of all of our stores. And when we do that, we want to make sure that um, any additional filters on city or province or uh, country aren't included. So to do that, what we do is up here for var, uh, we're going to call this v objects. This is all of the objects we're working with. On this particular example, we're looking with stores. But if you were doing products, uh, you would do products or, you know, whatever you've got. And so we're going to do all, right? Because we want to get all of these things, right? We want to go through all the different stores and find the either the highest sales or the highest goal, whichever one is higher. And that's going to be the number that constitutes 100% across the x-axis of our image. Okay, so we're going to start with the thing that you would guess, which is uh, location, that's the store number. But then we're going to add in uh, all this other stuff here. So we're going to add in, uh, we're going to add in city, and we're going to add in country, and we're going to add in province. The order doesn't really matter. Uh, I just did whatever was closest arrowing down. We just want to make sure that um, we don't just use uh, location. We use all of these things. That's going to become important uh, when we uh, iterate over these guys. Okay. So uh, what I want to do next is I'm going to hit shift enter. Now that we've got a list of all of our locations, I'm going to go create a new variable. I'm going to call this max actual, right? Because the far end of our X axis, 100% of the way across our image is going to be either the biggest actual or the biggest goal amount. So we have to get both of those. So for our max actual, we're going to do a max x. We're going to say, hey, go over a table, uh, specifically the table of all the objects. So go through all of our different locations. And for each one, go ahead and calculate the uh, total sales, right? And bring back the single highest total sales. Cool. OK, well, that's the, the single highest um, actual for all of our stores. Now we're going to get the v max goal, right? And that's going to be very similar. It's also going to be a max x, also over v objects. So we're going to say, Hey, uh, I want you to go go over all of the objects, all of the locations that we've got. For each one, I want you to calculate the total goal and bring me back the biggest one. So the single biggest total goal for any store. Okay, shift enter a couple times. So now that we've got those, we can determine uh, which of those two is bigger. And to do that, we're going to call this uh, v uh, x 
axis range, right? In fact, we'll call it range base, be a bit more specific. Um, this is gonna be the bigger of these two things, right? And so to do that, we're gonna use the max function. And normally when we use the max function, or at least when I use the max function, I usually feed it um, a column and it'll bring me the single biggest value in that column. Alternatively, you could actually give it two scalars, right? Two uh, just numbers and it'll tell you which of those two numbers is bigger. So we wanna know between the uh, max actual and the um, max goal, which of those two numbers is bigger? And that's gonna get populated into the this uh, V access range base value right there, okay? So with that, what we could do is we can go get, um, for each individual chart, this is basically gonna correspond to the uh, how far the, the right 100% means, we can go get the actual pixel numbers for our different chart elements. So for V actual, uh, we're just going to say, hey, uh, let's go divide, let's go divide the, uh, ah, not the bullet chart, we don't want that. We want, uh, we're building that. We wanna to get total sales and we wanna divide it by the uh, V X axis range base, right? So this is gonna tell us, um, so this is, uh, this is the total number of dollars that corresponds to the furthest right possible. This is the total amount of dollars for this particular chart, like for example, store eight here in Victoria, British Columbia. And that'll tell us what percentage across the bar should be for Victoria, okay? But it's gonna tell us as a percentage. So what we need to do is we need to multiply this by 100 to figure out how many pixels across it should be, okay? So if it's the single biggest store, uh, it'll be 100 pixels, it'll be all the way across. If it's the sort of halfway mark, it's the 50% of the way to the biggest store, well, this will be 50 pixels or 50% 50, uh, 50 of the way across. Now, the other thing I'm gonna do is when I make this division, I'm gonna get this big long uh, number with a bunch of, a decimal point, a bunch of numbers after it. I'm gonna use the int function to just sort of essentially round that to a single whole number. It'll just look a little bit nicer. I don't need to, but I like the way it works. Um, and then what I'm gonna do is right now I've got this set all the way to 100. Uh, I'm actually gonna trim that a little bit. I'm gonna bring this down to 90. The reason being, I found that if you had your uh, chart elements go all the way to the edge of the chart, it actually doesn't look very good. So I uh, sort of bring this down from 100 to 90 so that everything only goes about 90% of the way to the uh, edge of the chart and actually looks a lot nicer that way. You certainly don't have to. Uh, feel free to experiment with it, uh, you know, moving that number up or down to see how it works. But I found 90 was a nice uh, number to work with. Okay, so I made a copy of that, Control C, Shift Enter, and Control V. Now we want the same thing, but we want it for goals. Right, V, goal. Add a couple spaces to line those guys up. I don't want total sale anymore. I want total goal. All right. Okay. And I'm gonna multiply it by 90 again. Whatever these numbers are is fine as long as they're the same between these two guys. All right. Okay. Uh, and then lastly, now that I've got that, I can go ahead and define the text that I'm returning. So I'm gonna go var v return. And I'm gonna start with my base text right there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna substitute some text strings out. So substitute some text strings out. So the first thing I'm gonna substitute out is say, hey, go look for anywhere you see the uh, text string hashtag actual. And wherever you see that, I want you to replace it with um, my actual number, the actual right there. Okay, cool. Well, that bit's done. I wanna make one more substitution. I'm gonna take what we just substituted out. And I'm also gonna say, hey, also substitute anywhere you see the text string um, goal hashtag goal, I want you to sub that out with my V goal number, right? Okay, and now that I'm all done, I can return my return value. Yay, that's really nice, okay? This is gonna work really, really well. Now, um, one thing I'm gonna check is sometimes some of these stores, if they're like a brand new store that's under construction or something, it won't have any actual sales associated with it, and if we show a chart, it'll be kind of a meaningless chart because there won't be a goal and there won't be an actual, it'll just be kind of an empty chart. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some logic to check to see and make sure that, hey, go see if there were at least some sales. Uh, if there were any sales at all, then you can go ahead and show the chart. But if there were no sales, don't show the chart, just don't show anything. So the way that's gonna work is I'm gonna take this uh, V return right here, I'm gonna do if, open quotation mark, uh, total sales. If total sales was anything, right? If any sales got made, Go ahead and show the chart, otherwise show blank, okay? And now I'm gonna add one more uh, line break right there, just to make it a little easier to read. Okay, cool, I've done all my good stuff. I started with this base text. I got a list of all the objects. I found uh, the single biggest actuals. I found the single biggest goals. I used that to find uh, how far across, uh, you know, all the way to the right of the chart. What does that mean in terms of dollars? 
Uh, then uh, for each individual chart, we'll find that chart's actual pixel number, that chart's actual or that chart's goal pixel number, and we'll go ahead and swap those out to our base text. Okay. So now I can go ahead and hit enter, and uh, I'm not quite done because what happens here if I take this new uh, my favorite chart, let me turn all this guy up, my favorite bullet chart. If I take this and drop it into the table right here, uh, I'm gonna get a bunch of text. Because I haven't told it yet that, hey, this is supposed to be an image, right? I have to explicitly say that. This is the new feature that we've got. So I click on my measure right here. I head over here to uh, modeling. And here in our data category, I'm gonna change this from uncategorized to image URL. And hopefully it renders. Oh yeah, that looks really nice. So I'm gonna change this from my favorite bull chart. I'll leave it like that here in my measure bin. I'm just gonna call this um, dot here, just because I actually don't even want to draw any attention to it. I want the chart to kind of speak for itself, just like that. And if I want to, I could come up here. Well, let's shrink that down a little bit first. Uh, if I've got the table selected, head over here to the paint roller, I can go down to the grid, and in the grid, I'll be able to change the image height. So by default, it'll be really teeny tiny, usually, like down like that. And that can actually work okay if you've got you know uh, lots and lots of stuff. Uh, you can make it really, really big if you want to. Like I can make this, I don't know, 45. Um, I think that's a little bit too big. The number that I sort of settled on that I thought worked pretty well was about, I don't know, 32 or 35, something like that. Maybe 35. Yeah, that looks pretty good. 35. Yep. And uh, yeah, it's really super duper easy. Uh, one thing that I have found is when you do this, you can't have subtotals. Um, you can actually build, the problem is, is when you add totals, like let me show you what it looks like. At least right now, this may get fixed in the next uh, month's release. If you add totals, and may, hey, maybe it got fixed uh, today. I don't feel kind of silly. If I go to totals and hit OK, uh, for some reason, whatever reason, it can't actually parse this image, this parts this text and turn it into a, an image file. So it gives us this ugly stuff right here. So the easy way around it is you just turn off totals, and it works pretty well. Okay. All right. Uh, well, boy, this is a very exciting time for uh, this kind of thing. I've, I've seen all kinds of posts online about this kind of, you know, using these SVG measures. Uh, they're very, very cool. And these bullet charts, uh, I love these things. I've been waiting for the ability to do this in tables forever and ever. And, uh, you know, this is kind of nice because this gives us a lot of control over how that happens. And so we can sort of do it ourselves. Well, uh, okay. Uh, as per usual, thank you very much for watching. I really hope that video was helpful and I will see you next video.